Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here and today I am bringing you the tutorial with the rotating fan uh, case that I promised you during the CFD summer series here. I brought you a short video where I wanted to draw your attention to a new tutorial that I contributed to uh, the openfoam.com version of openfoam and now it's time to do the tutorial. I'm not sure whether this is going to be a one part tutorial, a two or three part tutorial. You'll see how many videos I upload. Okay, so I have not prepared anything for this for a very good reason, because I want to just go through with you guys um, and stumble upon possible problems that you might face that I wouldn't if I don't go into this blind. And I really like this approach because I do the same thing on Patreon. So if you go, for example, to my channel, here is my Patreon link where you are very, I would really appreciate if you like my videos and you could uh, support me, just go through the tiers then and what you get for in the different tiers. But what I want to tell you here is that I started doing this blind uh, tutorials. So for example, here with CF mesh or snappy hex mesh creating your geometry. I have a couple of tutorials, as you see, 18 videos. And I started here these blind tutorials where I go into them and uh, just uh, go along with you and step by step and I show you how you can create uh, create a mesh for example and with this uh, I stumble upon possible things that I wouldn't find if I prepared it uh, beforehand. So this is what I'm going to do also today. So to find the links to this tutorial with uh, the rotating mesh, I provided you two links. One is the, the wiki page where you can just go to the tutorial page of the documentation or you can go directly here to the case files. Or alternatively, you can go directly to the tutorial by clicking this link without going to the wiki as you want. Okay, so this is the tutorial. And we'll go through this tutorial that I, as you see here, contributed to openform.com and to the documentation, documenting the rotating possibilities, rotating mesh possibilities in openform with AMI. And first, what we will do is download the case file. And as you see here, this is on develop.openform.com. And this is uh, the tutorial as it comes. So currently, the only possibility to download is to download the entire development source code of OpenFoam. But it is uh, currently September 2019. So if you already have version 1912, so if you're watching this tutorial in 2020, 2021, then you can just go into your current OpenFoam.com release and then go to Tutorials, Incompressible Pimple from RIS and then into Rotating Fan in Room and you don't have to download anything because this tutorial will come with the openform.com version. Unfortunately, not with the .org version, um, but with the .com version. You can try and download it anyway and then run it with the .org version, but some, maybe you have to do some syntax changes there. Okay, so as you see, I downloaded now the entire source code. And what I will do, I have, as you already might know, I have a symbolic link here in Windows 10 to my Windows uh, file system. And then I put my files into my Patreon files and yeah, for whatever reason, and it is rotating fan. And here I will now start the tutorials. In video, I record now this video. So that's not very interesting for you guys. Okay, so then let's just copy uh, from the downloads, the OpenFoam uh, zip file into my rotating fan tutorial. We will not compile OpenFoam. Hopefully you already have OpenFoam installed on your um, on your PC or laptop. If you don't, then check out my videos, how to do that here on YouTube and also in Patreon, I have videos. Uh, 
Okay, so let's just copy it. So in Windows 10, you have to go, go to your C drive and then your user account and then downloads and then it is called open foam plus develop zip so as i mentioned you can skip this part if you're watching this in 2020 and now all you have to do is oh, come on explorer x uh, and here you have the zip file and you have to now extract it you can do it in windows or you can do it here in uh, Linux, if you're following on, uh, along in Ubuntu or in Linux, just enter the same commands in the terminal that I do here. So extract seven with 7-zip, oh, come on, open form. Now this takes a while. Um, so because we are extracting now the entire uh, source code of open form, but let's wait. Uh, okay. What do you want? Uh, make files. We don't care about that. So always do that. We only want to take a look at the tutorial here. Okay. So in this tutorial, we will take a look at the rotating fan uh, tutorial that is now currently available only in the development version of OpenFoam. But with 1912, you will also receive it out of the box. So here, uh, this is an overview of what we will do, to do today. We will take a look at the geometry. I already prepared this geometry as a set of STL files. You should have it already prepared in tri-surface. All the STL files, I also have the Blender files available for you guys. Uh, and then we will go through Snappy Hex Mesh, the settings that you have to take care of in Snappy Hex Mesh, and then the boundary conditions and the simulate additional set setups and then we will run the simulation and at least for a little bit because the simulation does take a little bit longer so um, so you can just run it for a longer time and take a look at the results at a later point of time okay so this is the plan today and I do think that I will split this video into separate videos. Okay, so it's 46, so we have half of it already extracted. Good. So let's wait until this finishes. And then I will just only copy the from tutorials incompressible, maybe or it's already here. RIS and rotating fan in room. Oh, it's already here. So I can just copy this and then paste it maybe here. Ah, and now we have the rotating fan in room. Very good. So, okay, so it's already finished at this point. Very good. So let's just jump into the tutorial. So in rotating fan in room, you have these files, maybe I just show you here in Windows. No, this is what I wanted. Okay, so what do you have here? You have an all run script for the mesh generation. You have an all run script to run the simulation and then you can clean to get this uh, state of the tutorials. In zero.org, you have uh, backup files for the starting files and in constant you have your STL files and later on the, the, the tutorial files and in system you have all the settings that you need for meshing and for the simulation. Now, you can just run all run and then it runs for you and you don't have to understand anything, but I would not advise you to do that. And what I would advise you to do is to use my suggested setup of the simulation with geometry, mesh and uh, case. So for that, I will do that. You can work in this rotating fan tutorial, but I would advise you to create here a geometry folder. Geometry folder and then take this as a backup and then place it here as a backup. 
If you are a Blender freak like myself, then you can open this up in Blender. You don't have to for this tutorial. So you can modify this geometry in uh, Blender. As you see here, this is what the geometry looks like. Maybe let's just take a look at it in, in Blender. So I exported the, uh, these surfaces as STL files, which you can see here. So this is the geometry and we have a room dot stl this is the gray the walls i have in the room a, a desk uh, which is uh, uh, what is a uh, brown desk <laughs> and then i have an inlet and an outlet which i call door and and outlet okay i could have called it window but it's called outlet here and i have an STL file for the AMI surface. So this STL will define the surfaces where we will interpolate between rotating mesh and stationary mesh. And then I have a, a geom an STL file for a fan, which I created myself. So sorry for these huge uh, blades, but oh well. <laughs> Okay, so I exported the, this, these STL files in, uh, in from Blender and if I open it up in Paraview, let's just do this, my documents and Patreon, rotating fan and then here in geometry, I can load all this, apply and there you go so this is what i just showed you room and then the geometry here okay so you now believe me that this is the geometry that we will take a look at good now as the second step i would advise you to create a mesh folder and in mesh you need system and constant so i copy this and I paste it into mesh. Okay, so then I go into mesh and usually I have a .foam file here, but a, a, for, for an official open foam tutorial, I have to use a certain um, syntax with this uh, all run scripts and there is no .foam file. So, you can adjust it as we can adjust it now as we want. And what I will do, I will create a foam file with uh, the command touch and I will call it, call it open.foam. And now, as you see here, we have this .foam file. And I know I used to call this foam.foam, but now I think it is a better idea to call it open.foam because with this, you can open up the mesh and later on the case files and also if you want to do then you can just use this open.foam file because this is just an empty text file and you can just write here uh, inside your cheat sheet of commands or uh, your ideas uh, what uh, um, what uh, what did you change? What was the last thing that you changed? So you remember later on. So you can use this and save with Control O, and then you have it all for always in the open .phone file. You can you can which you can just open up in any text editor. Okay. So now as for the mesh, so let's just go back here. So the geometry, I already showed you the geometry. We have a door, a window called outlet, then a desk, rotating fan, and cylinder uh, defi uh, defining uh, the cells inside, which are rotating, and also additionally defining an interpolation surface between the rotating and the non-rotating cells. But now, what that really means, we will see in the mesh part. So for that, for the mesh, we... Um, execute a couple of commands and you guys always ask me about the tutorial on snappy hex mesh this is a very good source for snappy hex mesh 
So if you want to take a look at it, uh, you have a quick reference here, which is great. And also here you have more detailed descriptions of all the settings. So this is really, really great. Okay, so, but uh, Snappy XMesh is not the main focus here. We now execute these commands in block mesh. Okay, so I'm not going into a lot of detail, surface feature extract, and I will just, uh, with the right mouse button, uh, paste this command here, and there you go. What, what did I do here? I did here, um, I used the, uh, the entries from this dictionary, I open it up, and here I extract the, from the STL files edges. And maybe I can show you. So, for example, in constant, I we created this extra node feature edge mesh, and this uh, created um, uh, extra, uh, 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 feature edges, which we will find also here. Here, meshes, and these are actually, for example, here on the desk. These are actually the edges of these tests, so these sharp edges. For more detail, I would really advise you to, if you're interested as in supporting me, to go and take a look at my Snappy Hex Mesh uh, tutorial, because I talk in more detail on this. Okay, so then, so with Surface Feature Extract, we extracted these um, um, edges, the sharp edges, and we could refine uh, only along these edges. But additionally, we will also refine close to the STL files themselves. Okay, so for that, we create our initial block mesh by using this command called block mesh. I have a video on my YouTube channel. It was my second video. Uh, ever how this work uh, how this works and now if I open up in mesh open dot phone I don't skip zero time then now you see we have a block mesh around it this is our starting mesh and we will refine this mesh around the STL all the STL files and also the emesh files the, the edge files and we will then define what is inside of our uh, domain and what is outside, and then we will throw out everything that is outside. Okay, so for this, I could open up Block Mesh Dictionary, and if you want to know more detail, then just check out my YouTube video on Block Mesh. Okay, as for Snappy Hex Mesh, what I'm doing, I'm loading all the STL files. I am defining certain levels, uh, so I'm defining uh, level two and level to around the AMI surface, so which means this cylinder as well as the fan. So here I use a, a rather fine mesh uh, along the edges and then later on here also on the, the surfaces, the STL surfaces that I imported, I also use level 2 here. I would advise you to use a level 3 on the AMI and the fan to have a good resolution there. And you are welcome to use also a higher resolution uh, everywhere else. And yeah, so for example, we could also define inside of the AMI surface everywhere uh, level three, if we commented this out. But I'm not going to do that because this is a tutorial and then it will take a long, long time. But I encourage you to increase the refinement uh, or along the, especially the AMI and the fan. And then you can feel free to use also fire mesh around the desk and so on. So, and with this command, with the location in mesh, which is a point somewhere inside of, or inside of the walls here, uh, we define the inside and everything that is outside. So, which is outside of this, uh, room.stl will be thrown away and you will see what will happen in a bit for that. 
I execute snappy hex mesh minus overwrite, enter, and now snappy hex mesh is running. Uh, maybe as a disclaimer, currently I'm using uh, OpenFORM version 1906. Okay, but if something is changed in later versions in the syntax, then it, as this uh, tutorial comes with the op official OpenFORM release, you don't have to take care of the syntax changes anymore. Okay, so we're, we're finishing the meshing stage. So already the coarse mesh takes a bit longer, but now we should be finished with uh, 134,820 cells, which is not bad. And now, so this was our initial block mesh. And if I refresh this now, and if I zoom in a little bit, now you see that something changed here and now we have different surfaces so this is our ami for example then we have a desk surface as you see here we also have a fan here inside so as you see now we have the mesh created with a certain refinement level and uh, maybe I show you only the fan. So this has level two. And as you see, uh, it's not a very fine mesh. You only have two cells over the thickness. So as I mentioned, I would encourage you to use a finer mesh. And now you see why I used such thick blades for this so we can also run a coarse mesh now for this tutorial and for a real life application for a real life uh, uh, rotating mesh i would really advise you to use a finer mesh good so that's it so we have now our mesh created with these commands that you find here surface feature extract block mesh and snappy hex mesh and there are actually there is actually one additional important point that we have to talk about here in Snappy Hex Mesh, and this is here in the refinement surface. We define two entries here, uh, or actually three lines. So with this entry, with the AMI STL file, we not only define an internal boundary, we also define with a level two refinement, we also define a cell zone called a rotating zone. Now this is just a name, I could call it blah, blah, blah. But with this cell zone, we select, maybe let me just show you the entire mesh and then create a Z normal Cut and don't triangulate, don't show. And so as you see here, now there is this line and this is given by the S, no, this line here, this surface, this is just due to snappy hex mesh. And here we define our EMI, SDL and everything, all the cells inside of these faces here, which we define with AMI STL, all the cells will be called rotating zone. And additionally, we define faces, which we can show here. So these faces here are also called rotating zone. I could have called it rotating zone faces or something. It doesn't really matter. But we, with this, we select first cells and second faces for the simulation later, because these cells will be rotating. So we will move only these cells inside of the STL file. And we will use these faces to communicate between the internal faces and the external faces, which are not moving. Okay, so this, uh, this entry is crucial 
for rotating mesh simulations. Okay, so these were now the commands. And now if you are really fancy, then we, uh, so as I said, this defines a cell zone called rotating zone, which will later define rotating cells. And we define a boundary which will be later used to define the interpolation phases between rotating and non-rotating regions. Just what I told you. And now we could renumber this, uh, the mesh. Ah, no, that's not what I wanted. This always happens to me. So I copy this command and this just renumbers the mesh so uh, it runs faster. And uh, for better calculation perf performance. And this uh, command converts the AMI mesh interface, uh, uh, converts the boundary AMI into uh, an actually uh, an interpolation surface. So for that, create patch overwrite. And what this does is you create patch text. It takes AMI and then creates a cyclic AMI out of it. So you don't really have to understand what this means. The important point is that here in constant polymesh and boundary. So we have our door, for example, the fan, and they are all defined as walls. For, for clarity, we could redefine this into patch because the door is an inlet and our outlet should also be patch really, but this is not very, uh, not really important, but so we have a clean setup, we just redefined it. And then here, these two, AMI1 and AMI2 are cyclic AMIs. And these are copies of the same faces here. And we will define, uh, we will use these surfaces to communicate between the internal and outer uh, and outer um, surfaces. Okay, so the mesh is finished, and what we now can do, we can now go into the case, but we don't have a case folder, so this is now I create a folder called case, and I just copy system constant and zero org here. And now let's not forget to copy the mesh, so polymesh from the mesh folder into case, constant and polymesh. And now we don't need the tri-surface folder anymore because we are not creating a mesh anymore. And in system, we don't need block mesh dictionary, create patch, dict, snappy and surface feature extract. They're just distracting here. Um, and now we create a, a copy of that. Uh, maybe let's do it in the terminal. So now we have an actual case setup with zero constant and system. And again, we create a foam file here. And now we have a good setup. So in this auric file, we have the backup files. Okay, so let's just take a look at the initial files. We are using pimple foam, so for that we have to specify the pressure and the velocity. And since we are using a turbulence model, um, uh, we also have to specify a couple of turbulent entry entries. And for example, for the velocity, always the AMIs are cyclic AMIs from the type. Then the fan has a moving wall velocity because it is moving and the no slip boundary condition has to adjust it accordingly. The, at the door, we have a velocity of an inlet velocity of 0 0.1 entering the room. So for example, let me just show you the, the room and the door. And so it is, so the door is going in the negative z negative x direction, and this is why the velocity is also pointing in the negative x direction. At the outlet, we use a typical boundary condition pressure inlet outlet velocity. And on the walls and on the desk, we use the no slip boundary condition. 
As for the pressure, and this is not the pressure in Pascal, but the pressure divided by the density, if you already know, the so-called so kinematic pressure, because uh, we are using pimple foam, which is an incompressible solver. But also for this uh, file, we use cyclic AMI on the AMIs everywhere where we are uh, specifying the velocity. So, for example, fixing it to zero or to, an, or, or to 0 0.1. So we use fixed value boundary condition for the velocity, we use this fixed flux pressure. And on the outlet, we fix the pressure to atmospheric pressure, zero. And then as for the, the turbulent values, it's usually always the same. We use a wall function on the walls, cyclic AMI, uh, on the AMIs and on the door I use turbulent mixing length frequency inlet where we define a um, mixing length scale. And also for the same, so wall functions on the walls and here we define the turbulent intensity on the inlet. If you go back to my uh, the in intermediate uh, videos on YouTube, then I calculate a, a fixed value for the, for, for example, K, according to a rule of thumb with the turbulent intensity. And this boundary condition does exactly that for you. So you don't have to calculate it by hand. You just have to enter the intensity, the turbulent intensity, and you have an initial value here. Okay. And then as for new T, you have wall functions and I use zero gradient on the inlet and the outlet and cyclic AMI. Okay, so as for the constant entries here, and you, you have all this information also here. So as for, for the velocity, for the pressure, and you can also click them and then take a look at the description. So what is this? What is, for example, Moving wall velocity, yes. Yeah, so a couple of them are already documented and linked. Okay, so you have all the, the, the boundary conditions here uh, listed. And then a uh, definition of the math mesh movement, which we define in a constant dynamic mesh dictionary. So I just opened it up in constant dynamic mesh dictionary and here you have a couple of settings that you have to use always and then now here we come to our cell zone that we used here, that we defined here which we called rotating zone if we named it blah 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 then now we also had to enter here blah 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 and then we have rotating motion of these cells and then we define three points uh, or three entries we define, let, let's start uh, the rotational speed. Uh, omega, which is in radians per second. So we have 10 radians per second in this case. And we define an axis. And as you see here, the axis is the Z direction. So this is why I'm defining an axis. And then we have to locate this axis somewhere in the, uh, in the room. And for that, we select a certain point on the rotational axis of this fan and you can find this here. Okay, so don't forget to change the origin. Otherwise, if your origin is somewhere else, then your cell zones will rotate around that uh, origin and then your simulation will crash very fast. Okay, then as for the gravitational acceleration, you can define it here. Transport equation, we use non-Newtonian, or sorry, Newtonian fluid air here. And for turbulence, proper, uh, turbulence properties, we are using here the K-omega SST model, which is also described here in a short matter. You can also click and find out what the K-omega SST model is. And because it is also already here uh, documented. Okay, so then as for the simulation settings, you, you can find here a small description here. And if I go to system and control dict, open it up, then you see here the schemes and second order discretization schemes, decompose par for 
four on four cores. You can change this if you have more cores available. And uh, as a default, we run the simulations for one second. You can change this and I told you to do so here. Run it for 10 or 20 seconds, but this will take a little bit longer. And we write out every 20 milliseconds. So if you run until 20 seconds, then I would advise you to change also the write interval. Okay, so that's it. And now at this point, we can just copy this and decompose it and then run the simulation in parallel. If you want to know more on parallel simulations, just check out my video on that. Now this command starts the simulation in the background and we are writing the output into the log, into this log file. So by entering tail minus n and the last 250 uh, rows or lines in that log file will be now printed here. And as you see, we are currently at 0 0.01. So this simulation takes a bit longer. And we write out every 0 0.02 seconds. So soon we will write out the first, ah uh, yes, the first results here. And now I can, oh, maybe I just close it. I'm here in case and I click on open.foam. Now this should open up the simulation results. I unclick skip zero time and I change it to decompose case. And now I can, for example, create a Y normal surface. Don't show plane, don't triangulate. And now I have here my cut solid color so this is maybe i also uncheck decompose polyhedra now you see because this is our actual mesh so these are polyhedra and these cells are com so this cell is communicating with both this cell and this cell but for in paraview it likes to decompose it into uh, tats for visualization purposes but this is really misleading Okay, so this is actually what the mesh looks like. And as you see here, I would uh, use uh, inside of the AMI the same resolution. But now we have the first results. Uh, and maybe it makes sense to have a Z normal plane here instead of a Y normal plane. Don't show, don't triangulate. Okay, and now we have our first time step. And as I see, as you see here, it did move. Okay, let's make this smaller and get rid of this. No, just get rid of this. Okay, now you see it is moving, the pressure is changing, and now I could show you, for example, here the velocity. How far are we? 0 0.1 so we have already a couple of results here and refresh so as you see here now or blades are cutting through the geometry as expected yeah now so it is a thicker geometry not just the tips it is a thicker geometry and now you can see the movement of the blades and hopefully we can see also here something yeah so uh, the blades are moving out of the display and then coming back into this plane and what we should see soon is a certain downward draft and for this we use glyphs and don't scale, otherwise they are going to be huge, the, the arrows. Ah, oh, sorry. I really want to 
use these glyphs on the slice and not on the open.form. So what did I do here? Before I clicked uh, on the open.form file and I click now on the slice because I want to have arrows only on the slice. One, apply, and now you see there is a certain downward draft. These are not scaled. We could scale them, but then we don't. We only have the velocities close to the, the rotating fan because at this point only the, the velocity is only high close to the fan. But if I don't scale it, then you see that there is a certain downward draft and. Uh, we end, we have a wind coming through the door and the air is leaving over the outlet or the, the window. So you see that additionally to this uh, movement, we also have a certain velocity given by the rotation of this fan. And the maximum velocity here is 6 meters per second, whereas we are entering the 0.1. So this velocity is the dominant velocity in this case. And we do have downward draft due to the rotation of this fan. Okay, now as you see, this is really running as expected. And it is interpolating between the cells in the, the moving cells. So the internal, these cells uh, over these faces, we are interpolating between the outer cells and the in internal cells. Okay, this is it. So this tutorial will run for a while now. It will, on my PC, it took a bit more than oh, six minutes to run. 0.24 so this will run for uh, 25 30 minutes i will not wait for, for the results because it's just a straightforward simulation i tested it it should run for 10 or 20 seconds also so just change the entry in control dict here to 20 and then save it and then the simulation will run for a longer time so that's it as you see here I show you results after 0.64 seconds and just go to town on this tutorial. The really important entries here are the entries in dynamic mesh dict, this omega axis and the origin. These are really important. If you mess these up, then your simulation will crash. Don't forget to use uh, um, cyclic AMI in the boundary conditions and don't forget to use moving wall velocity for the velocity and uh, before that these entries for AMI are also crucial for rotating mesh. But other than that just execute the commands that I gave you here and then you should be good. So with that I hope that you like this tutorial and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.